Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Barham Engines. So first of all today guys, we're getting involved with the V8, the Chrysler V8, the big seven odd litre. Um, we've got some things to do on that. We're gonna run you through the pre-cross flow that Paul's doing, the Cosworth one, and um, some of the things we found along the way. And also we are going to be doing a bit of agricultural stuff. So um, yeah, stay tuned guys, hope you enjoy. As you can see, we've got the inserts in the Chrysler engine. Uh, this is the big seven odd litre one. You can see there we've blended the inserts in, so we've just took them out probably about a mil and a half and just blended them into the ports there to give it a little bit more flow. Um, so the next stage, before we face these heads, we need to work out the compression ratio. So what I've done is, like I showed you the other day, we've set it up on our sort of head jig here and get it upright using our, our method of putting the perspex over the top with the two holes, obviously an old spark plug in there and we've checked out the volume of these cylinder heads to see what they are. Now, Dave from Oily Rag Classics, um, he's the one who's building this engine. He said originally they sort of were about eight and a half to one. They can go up to about 10 to one, but he'd rather run on the safe side and go sort of a little bit down on that. Um, so done the CCs, you know, the volume CCs in this head and they are 95 cc's in these particular heads with the valves in. Um, the gasket is 1.2 mil thick um, and I've got the, the diameter written down there. So the, the, the volume of the gasket is just over 12 cc's and we have got five cc's in the piston crowns with the valve cutouts. So in the top of those pistons, those cutouts there are five cc's. So I've done my calculations and I've worked out that the compression ratio of these of this engine at the minute bear in mind it's been bored out 20 thou is 9.1 to 1 so i've had a word with dave if i take about 40 thou off these heads we're going to be up to near enough 10 to 1 so i'm going to take 30 thou off them um, should be around 9.7 to 1 obviously we're going to take 30 thou off and just measure these chambers again but that's what we should be running and then it's going to be on the on the safer side really just below 10 to 1 it's not a performance engine he just wants to up the compression so that's what we're going to do on that look at the state of isaac bless him i do feel bad but someone's got to clean out the bead blaster and it weren't going to be me <laughs> i've done that too many times in my life look yeah, at him not very good, is bless it? him at least it's friday afternoon mate you can have a yeah. clean up when you get home so Paul is just gapping the rings on the pre-cross flow. So this is the Cosworth one. And um, I think he's deglazed the bores, obviously give the block a thorough check. And now he's just gapping the rings. So obviously this is the engine, just to recap, this is the engine that was built. Uh, Malcolm bought the engine all done, supposedly been done. Um, and in fairness, a lot of it was done correctly like the bore sizes, it's had the steel mains caps. So it's had, you know, it's had some money spent on it, ported head and what have you. So yeah, first of all, first problem we spotted, obviously when we stripped it and measured it, were the Conrod housings, big end housings. had obviously, obviously been sized because you can see them been freshly honed, um, but they hadn't actually sized the rods properly. What they'd done is they'd just honed them out. Um, and they were in fact, a couple of them were about a thou and a half over top limit. So. That's obviously no good at all. Um, rather than resize those rods, because as I mentioned in a previous video, a couple of the caps are on the wrong way. And what that does, if you put the caps on the wrong way and then torque the, the big end up, what it does is because you've got hollow dowels in there, it shifts the dowels and then them rods are gonna be well out of true. So um, rather than um, fart about with those, which we can do in the future, if Malcolm really wants to, he sent us a new set of rods um, which we've obviously balanced together. Of course, check the, check the housings and they're spot on, aren't they? Yeah. The small ends were a little bit tight on these gudgeon pins. Yeah, so I've just honed these out very slightly just so they sort of go in properly. Nice slide fit. So they're not too much, much play, but you can still, you know. Yeah, that's right. Um, these pins are quite tight on the uh, pistons. So yeah. I've done the same with the pistons. So a nice sort of nice 
nice slide fit in the piston. Nothing, not loose. Before, you, to get these into the pistons, you had to heat them up um, yeah. with a heat gun, which is not ideal, really. I mean, obviously, you've got two different types. You've got, um, these are obviously bushed, and you've got circlips in the, in the pistons to hold the pin in, but some types, um, it will be a shrink fit in the rod, yeah. so they need to turn freely in the pistons. So, with this type, it, it, it's not really critical that they're, you know, a, a slide fit in the pistons, but it's always good practice, isn't it, to have it? Like, you want to be fairly snug, but you want to still be able to do it just by hand. That's right, yeah. Um, so you're just checking the rings. Yeah, just doing the ring gaps, obviously deglazed the bores, as you said. Ring um, gaps are all right? Yeah, just, they're all fine at the moment, just doing double checking that. I've cleaned this block, I've took the oilway bungs out, cleaned the oilways up. Yeah. Um, the block was quite dirty inside, so I spent it quite a yeah, few so hours. Yeah, that, um, that was one other issue. It was, um, although this had not been running this engine, and it was a real, you know, it was a fresh build, it was very, very dirty inside. So we've got nice, uh, nice fresh, it was all, almost in here. It was almost like it hadn't been cleaned at all, really, hadn't it? I don't, it hadn't been cleaned properly, honestly. And no. it, you know, if you rebuild it, it's got to be done properly. It was quite... It took a quite a long time to get the dirt off, but yeah. you get enough sort of um, TFR on there, let it soak in. Um, but, yeah, this is a much better standard. That's right, yeah. So, so um, obviously, what all we've done on this one, as I said to you in the last video, Malcolm is going to sell this one, but he wants to sell it we're just blueprinting it really going through it and making sure everything's all right um i'm unleading the cylinder head although it's a ported head that's been gone through um obviously i've cut it out for the inserts i've ordered the inserts which we should get tomorrow so i can get those in and that would be um, suitable for unleaded fuel then um you just put the hardened exhaust seats in check the crank um yeah and everything else everything else is pretty good really i think what we're going to stick a steel head gasket on it yeah so obviously guess, whoever yeah. buys this engine we want it to be um a sort of period spec but all properly done so i think the next step really is finish your ring gaps clean your crank get the crank in do the bearing clearances check the, or you know check clearance of the plastic gauge um same with the big ends and we get the uh, bottom end built up basically yeah ideal so what we've got here is a ferguson t20 petrol tractor block and you're probably thinking why has it got no liners in it so the customer has we do quite a lot of agricultural stuff really um the customer has bought an engine kit so we don't mind if the customer buys the kit as long as they buy a decent one um but if they're building it it doesn't really matter so you normally find that these agricultural kits they do engine kits they're so reasonable reasonably priced this kit obviously consists of the full gasket set, four piston kits, um, obviously the rings, small end bushes over here, which we've got to put in the, the com rods, and over here, which I've unboxed, which is really good, um, the cylinder head kit comprises of the springs, valves, new guides, new collets, so everything really. Um, and then we've got the liners. So you've got to bear, I mean, bearing in mind, a lot of these kits they're usually like two or three hundred quid and that comes with pistons and liners and everything it's absolutely unbelievable um compared to the car stuff for, for whatever reason you know the quality is really good but the price is just a lot less and then you've got the marine stuff which is the same sort of stuff but about three times more than the car stuff so it makes it look a bit of a joke really but anyway he's got these um fully finished liners and these have got to go into the block with the correct jut out of the liner um so what we normally do, um, I mean, if you were doing this, if you were doing this in the field, you could, the theory is you could take the head off, you could pull the liners out, replace the new ones uh, with new pistons and sort of do it all in situ. But to do it properly, if uh, we always suggest to the customer, if you're going to bother doing it um, and it's completely stripped, you may as well do it properly. So what we do is, first of all, we face the top of the block and um, the top of the block they always say he's absolutely fine, the farmers do, because it's a cast iron block, but that doesn't make any difference whatsoever. Um, we normally find that cast iron is just like aluminium, if not worse, because it sort of corrodes a bit worse. So this particular block here, I've ended up taking six thou off the top to get a clean finish all the way around. So we start with that, that's the first process. Then you see that you've got the seats for the liners down the bottom. Um, now, firstly, guys, I do apologise for 
making the camera go blurry when putting my hand in front of it. A few of you in the comments have given me a rollicking for that, so I do apologize. I must turn autofocus off. But anyway, um, we're assuming on this one, the, the bases, so that's down here, do look really good. Um, but a lot of the time they don't. You know, this is a particularly good block. So you re if you don't face the block and, and do the liners individually, you're, you're assuming that all those bases are still level, but not necessarily. So what we do, we face the block first, then we put each liner in, each hole, and measure the jut out. Now in the manual, they give a two to eight thou jut out. So obviously we're using a fiber, I think it's a fiber gasket on this or a copper, um, but eight thou sounds quite a lot really in engineering terms with jut out. A lot of the time we sort of aim two or three thou protrusion. So because we've faced the top of the block, um, we need to then put each individual liner in, see what measure the jut out, and then we just machine the top of the liner in the lathe to get our correct jut out. Then we will mark so obviously the, you've got the front, um, we will mark that liner number one with an arrow facing to the front and we know that that's where that liner goes in. So we do them individually. Um, then obviously whatever we take off the, the liner, we're gonna have to take off the top of the piston. Um, you might get away with you know, quite a bit, but it's while we're at it, we may as well just take it off the top of the piston if it's a flat top. Um, so that is what we're doing here, guys. Then we have got to obviously go through the cylinder head. The cylinder head's over here. So step with this. These guides out, it's a cast iron guide. We, we get those guides out, put the new ones in, ream them to the new, um, the correct size for the new valves. Then we cut all the seats, then we face the head and then that head is done. So regarding the last video, guys, on the um, the, the negative comments, etc. Just want to thank all of you for commenting on that video. Um, really positive comments, made us feel a lot better, sort of upped our morale slightly. You start to get, as a couple of you have said, if you look at the percentage, if we've got 30,000 views on a video and 300 people comment and then only, say, 20 of those comments are negative, percentage-wise, it's next to nothing. And I'm pretty sure um, some of these really big channels get way more than we do. So it's not all bad, but you can't help but notice these negative comments. And um, in real life, without the YouTube channel, the only negative criticism you're ever used to is face to face, which is very, very rare. If you get into a bit of a, a, a Barney with someone um, and none of us like to hear it. So when you read these comments and they sort of seem a bit personal, can get to you but um yeah just want to thank you very much for that guys and um, really positive and i'm glad like you say that even the ones that don't comment we're just really glad that you enjoy our content and we we do our best so yeah thanks a lot guys so here we've got the pre cross flow head as you can see the inserts have arrived we've got those in and we've finished them so what i do is these were eight mil long and we've only gone five mil deep in the head so we've Obviously put these in with an interference and our glue. Um, I've topped them off to the surface of the bottom of the combustion chamber there. And then I've set the valve up as I normally do with our little tool here and um, put our three phase cutter on just to the point where the outside of the third angle just touches the seat. And then what I do is inlet in, obviously which we've just cut, and I measure both valves at the back and make sure that the jut out's right. If we need to come through any more with the, the exhaust, then I cut it a bit more. But I always do it a little bit on the safe side to start with. Um, and then I sort of know where I am. Um, so we've done all them. That's all ready to be cleaned out and assembled. Um, and ready for Paul to put back on the engine. Well, until another episode, guys, have a great weekend and we will see you on Monday.